I am terrified of heights. It's not that I don't like them, it's just that I always have the compulsion to jump if they're there. It's kind of like a physical Tourette's that I've got, uh, which is pretty strong and not really very helpful for this project at all. The brief that um, we got from them was just to present something up in the cupola on top of the Victoria and Albert Museum that somehow related to the history of the museum and embraced new media. It was something that celebrated the museum as a beacon of culture and knowledge from around the world. And I use quite a lot of optical toys that come from this kind of period. The zoetrope is pretty much a Victorian invention. It was born roughly about the same time. It's a very primitive form of animation. It's something that preceded the cinema. It was the first, first time we actually got an animated sequence of images. It couldn't have been designed better for me. I could have had the apertures a little bit thicker between the pillars here to give you more visibility. So you'll be seeing things through those little slots as it goes around, which kind of goes back to the original zoetrope, actually based on little slots all the way around the periphery. Three-dimensional zoetrope is a fairly new innovation on that technique, and it uses actual three-dimensional models. So instead of a picture, it's a thing. In my case, things made out of plastic. And those little things, those models or figures, have increments of animation in them. So for example, if it's a little character, it's one like this, one like this, one like this. They're on the side of your disc, the disc rotates, and then instead of having like the shutter, you have a stroboscopic light which flashes in sequence with that object. So as the object passes in front of you, you see it. When it's the light's off, you don't see it. You're limited to the kind of subject you can deal with because it's something that has to be identifiable from quite a long way away. The nearest you get is 82 meters. Also, the fact that it's up on top of the building limits realistically what could be going on up there. So immediately it came down to two things, which were bats in the belfry or moths around a lantern. As they wanted to present something which was the Victorian Albert Museum as a beacon of knowledge and culture and learning, moths around a lantern seemed to kind of make the project itself. I'm building a smaller version of the same thing downstairs here in the garden, something that generally wouldn't be visible in any kind of ambient line, particularly not outside. But for this project, I've made an innovation, which is the first time I think it's ever been done, which should make this little optical illusion viewable in daylight. The largest zoetrope that I've built before has been two meters wide, which I thought was pretty big. This will be more like 10 meters wide. So it's quite a huge increase. Well, not only is the project bigger, bigger than normal for us, the whole, the project in itself is, is phrase I can think of, it's punching above its weight. You know, this is very, very tricky. I mean, these are tricky at the best of times. They're tricky to make them that big, but they're really tricky to put them on top of the V&A. That's, that's, that's something else. One of the ch most challenging parts of the job is actually designing it so it can fit through the hole at the top of the, at top, at top of the space, but also designing it so that it, it, you know, we weren't breaking it down into sort of like suitcase type pieces, because we'll be assembling all for years up there otherwise. There was a few different ideas on how to make a wheel that big, but the most simplistic one was the bicycle wheel. So Matt's worked with uh, Georgina, his assistant, and they've, put in, they've developed the colour the color scheme on this as well. And it's, she was heavily involved in the last zoetrope as well, so she developed the whole sort of paint, paint system for it. And also the team of interns, you know, that need to be able to get this done, because without that kind of, you know, sort of hands-on, number-crunching painting craft, it's to, you know, things like this don't happen. So the effect of all this work is to produce, you know, 3D animation. You know, it's utterly convincing and nothing quite prepares you for the sort of first time I, well, I saw it. The bottom moss probably roughly about this kind of position here and then two more levels above it. The LEDs, the actual lighting for it will be in some kind of little device like this, which is going to be against the wall one, two, three, four, eight of them all the way around. So there's light all around it. And then what you should also get is the light flashing up, hitting the moss, and then creating moth-like shadows on the ceiling, which are flickering away as they flicker as well. There's a certain unknown quantity about what is actually going to happen because it's quite a peculiar space. 
So this is the night before it opening. We've still got some technical problems now and because we're right up on the top of the museum, any little component that we need, we have to send somebody down about 16 flights of stairs. So a little bit nervous at the moment whether they're going to actually pull it all off. I'm pretty happy with the way that it's all come together in the time that we had, which is very, very limited. Generally, a medium-sized two-metre zoetrope would take me six months. Here we've got a kind of 10-metre one that's had to be done in two months. It's kind of mission impossible. So I'd like to have created something that's uh, very beautiful and beguiling and brings people in to look at it, but I'd also like to smuggle in a little bit of doubt in there about what it is they're actually becoming engaged with when they're looking at the work. Hopefully that the people, when they actually arrive at the museum and they see this thing, they're going to be drawn to it like moths to a flame. They don't really know why they're looking or being attracted to this thing. And it may be not a perfectly healthy thing to be engaged in, but it's something that they can't help being drawn to.